Welcome to SwanseaTechSupport.co.uk This is a follow-up video to the last video I did on uh, using a pivot table to group time into time intervals of half an hour. We use this column here to uh, uh, to round down the values in this column to half hour intervals and then push those over to a pivot table and we had lots of nice uh, half hour intervals down there. Um, the user who uh, I was helping, the uh, YouTube user I was helping, got back in touch and said, this is great, but my supervisor, well, he doesn't like it. And the reason he doesn't is he says the data just isn't contiguous, and that's a problem for them. You see, over here I got 12 till 1, but where's the 12.30? And down here I got 8.30, suddenly jumping to 11. He said his supervisor wants to have every half hour interval between 12 and 12. Ah, oh, gee, that's just, you know. That's a, that's a problem with the data because we don't have these values here. So what I'm going to do, or the solution I'm suggesting, is to use a macro to actually insert that data in with dummy values of zero. Um, and the way that the macro is going to work is that it's going to start from the very bottom of the data down here on the last one. The reason I'm going to do that is because when I come up here and I insert a row, it's going to push everything down. So if I was working from top to bottom, it would work down to there now because we now included that row and that row would get ignored. Okay, so if rather than working top down, we actually need to work bottom up. The other thing I want to point out just here is that what the macro is going to do is it's going to say, okay, what's the value beneath me, which is 11 o'clock, take half an hour off that. So we're going to end up with 10.30 there and it's then going to uh, copy that over to 10.30. This would normally then go up to the next cell and check that, but if you notice what happens is that we have a gap now between 10.30 and 8.30. So what I'm proposing is that each time that we do this and actually insert values, in fact what I'm also going to do here, I forgot to mention, is I'm going to take all of these and actually put uh, zeros in all of those dummy data. That just helps with our pivot table, so it's got values and the whole thing is contiguous and we're not missing any data there. Um, but as I said, so we after we do this uh, and add these zeros, we then want to go back and recheck the same row, the row that we've just done. It'll then say, okay, is this row that we just done equal to this one, uh, or rather, is there a half hour gap? Well, no, there's a greater than half an hour gap. So it's going to insert another row. It's then going to look at the value beneath it, which will be 10.30. I'd take away half an hour off that, and it'll give us 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock in there. And it'll do the same thing again, it'll take those, and we're going to fill these all with zeros. Okay, so that's how this is going to work. Um, I'll just show you the code for that now, which isn't too long. Uh, go to the code, we're in, ooh, where's... Okay, let's unhide all that, whoops, there we go. So I'm in a module that I've called Insert Rows. Uh, that's called the insert rows macro. Um, first thing we do is to find the final row and the final column with these uh, pretty normal um, formulas there. And that means that then when we're looking over here for the, uh, the column, it'll know how many columns there actually are in the data set. Then in order to know that it has to fill in that many columns is going to take away two. So we're going to take the top number of the columns, take away two, and it'll know how many columns to fill in. And uh, the final rows, as I said, we're going to work from the final row and actually move back one each time. So that's why we have the final row and final column uh, formulas up there. We're going to have an integer value um, there for, uh, for the row that we're on. And then, as I said, we're going to take that from final row to three, and we're going to move backwards uh, by one row each time, so step minus one. 
Um, find the row y to 3, well, because when we come to the top of the data, well, row 2 doesn't have anything above it, so we only actually want to check row 3 against row 2. Okay, so that's why we do that. Next line, we want to check, is there a half hour difference between the cells? Um, or if it's greater than that, that is if it's greater than this value here, which is uh, computer code for half an hour, um, then we can add the cells and do everything as I explained. Uh, so we're taking cells, this, that, the row that we're on, the second column, the B column, and we're going to say, is the value in that column uh, greater than, uh, sorry, subtract the um, value of the column below it, cells uh, I, that row, sorry, the row beneath it, I minus one, second column again. So take, take those value from that value. Is that uh, greater than half an hour? If it is, then we want to insert entire row, entire row dot insert there into uh, into the row cell I. Um, next thing we do then is to uh, insert the values into column B. So we say uh, look at so column B, uh, the same row but uh, second column, column B. Uh, that wants to be the value for that one that we want to insert into it is going to be equal to um, that the row beneath it, i plus one, um, take away the half an hour. So when we're working on, um, whoops, when we're working on this and we insert a row, it's going to say 11 minus half an hour, 10.30, simple as that. Um, next thing then, as I said, we're going to co uh, copy the value in, value in column B over to the value in column A. So that's all that is. Uh, the same row, but uh, column 1 is going to be equal to the same row of column 2. And then, as I said, we want to put zeros in all the cells. Uh, all the free cells. So we're going to start from the third column. We're going to resize that. As I said, it's going to be the final column minus two because we're not filling in anything in A and B. And then we're going to put zero in all those. And then as I explained, we're going to increase the row by one. So if we're working on row 19, it'll then think it's uh, row 20. So then when it comes back to the minus 1, we'll go back to row 19 and we'll recheck row 19. So let's just run through that and see if uh, this is going to work. So show windows side by side. OK, I'm going to uh, step through this code now using the F8 key. I'm going to press F8. It's going to work out uh, where my final row is and where my final column is. Okay, now I've got uh, a watch expression here on the um, row, so I know I'm on row tw 220. 220, same as row 219, so it shouldn't, uh, nothing should happen there. Whoops, pressed the wrong button, didn't want that. Okay, that's it, it ignored it. Okay, row 219, is that the same as row 218? Well, there's half an hour difference, so it should ignore that. Okay, we'll keep going. Okay, we're now on row 215. Row 215, yep, yeah, that's the first one where there's greater than half an hour difference. So it should insert the row in there, which it does. It should then copy that value, 11 minus half an hour. Brilliant, copy that over to cell A. Brilliant, now fill in our zeros, done. Now, if we run that through, press F5 to run that through a whole data set, you can see that we've got a few here. This has got 10.30, 10, 9.39, brilliant, and then 8.30, absolutely brilliant. Um, we've got one here at 9 o'clock that was missing. That's added it in, 9.30, 8.30, yep, that's fine. Okay, we've got a few here, 5.30 to 6.30, and 12.30 there.
Okay, so that's that macro. Um, I'll post a copy of this macro uh, or a link to this uh, to the code for this macro on the website. So if anybody um, wants to use it in their uh, work, feel free to, uh, to to follow that link and uh, copy it into your projects. Okay, as usual, if you've got any comments, uh, any questions you want to ask, just feel free to use the comment section below this video. Um, after that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.